Hello friends, followers and channel members, welcome back to the channel and in today's video we are going to be having a look at a lesser known procedure but a very important procedure and that is the balked landing procedure. Now the balked landing procedure is essentially something that you do just before initiating a full go around procedure and this is usually done very very close to the runway and in fact sometimes you can even touch down on the runway as we've just seen in the video clip. Now this video is off the back of the live stream we did yesterday flying into split where we got wind shear right at the last minute and we heard the radio altimeter uh, call out dropping very quickly from 50, 40, 30, 20 and so we needed to react, get the aircraft away safely, do another approach and come in for a safe landing. But the balk landing procedure is something that needs to be applied close to the ground before flying the full go around procedure. In this video we're going to look at what it is, why we have to do it and how we can then safely fly away to begin another approach. So the first thing we are going to look at is just flying a normal go around procedure. Now many of you will be familiar with this already, but I still want to touch on it in this video. So we're going to just fly this approach and initiate a normal go around. Now there's different ways that we can actually fly a go around procedure as well. And that's what I want to have a little look into. We're going to be flying an approach today onto runway 30 at Ljubljana and as you can see from the charts in front the go around procedure is essentially we fly straight out get to the Ljubljana VOR then make a left hand turn heading 135 to intercept the 172 radial outbound and then once we're 30 miles out we make another left hand turn when we fly to the Dolsko VOR and enter the hold. Now all of this does sound a little bit overwhelming when you put it like that because obviously we've got to fly the go around, we've got to make sure that we're safe, we're doing all of the flows that we need to do associated with the go around and then we also need to fly this procedure. Well the great thing about the Airbus A320 is that all of this information, this go around track is actually stored in your navigation database so you can essentially fly a go around with the autopilot on which really helps to reduce workload management. Management. You can see here on the flight plan the text in blue that is the go around track as depicted in the charts and if I come up to the navigation display you'll see it's also shown there if I uh, just switch this over to the uh, the plan mode there we go so you can see how the navigation display matches up with the go around procedure as also shown on the charts as well. Now flying the go around in nav mode is something that newer Airbuses are able to do. Some of the old models didn't used to uh, didn't used to do this, so you had to engage nav mode by pushing the nav button on the FCU. But as you can see here, you've got the option in the Phoenix aircraft to have an older model A320 or a newer model A320 by putting the nav in go around, and you can obviously select this uh, however you want. So for the purposes of this video I'm going to actually leave nav in go around mode turned off so I will manually engage nav mode by pushing the nav button on the FCU. Let's have a look then at a normal go around. So this will be just a standard go around, nothing out of the ordinary where we'll kind of decide to uh, go around and abort the landing well above the, uh, the runway threshold. So we're not really close to the ground when we decide that we are going to uh, select toga and go around flaps etc. So the standard procedure for a normal go around is for the pilot flying to move the thrust levers to toga, begin rotating if the autopilot has been disconnected. Of course, remember, you can also go around if you're performing an auto land, in which case the autopilot would remain on and selecting toga would force the aircraft into the go around stage. However, not in this example here. Autopilot is off. I'm manually landing. So rotate with the side stick, call for go around flaps. The pilot monitoring at this stage would then retract the flaps one stage. So if you're doing a flaps full landing, you would move them to flaps three. If it was a flaps three landing, you'd move them then to flaps two. Check the FMAs to make sure that we have the go around initiated. And then you would retract the landing gear. 
It is at this point that this is simply just like a normal conventional takeoff. So you're doing everything you would do had you just taken off, which of course many of you will be more than familiar with. So at this point, when we uh, reach the thrust reduction altitude and you see the FMA flashing at the top left of the primary flight display, we just select CL thrust. And once we're at F speed, after that, we could then reduce the flaps to flaps one. If flaps were set to flaps three at this point, you would skip flaps two and move them straight to flaps one. They don't need to be retracted in stages. Once you're at S speed, then flaps can uh, be moved to zero, so the aircraft's clean. Ground spoilers would be disarmed and obviously set whatever exterior lights are required. To reduce that workload management, then the autopilot is absolutely your friend here. So what you would do is simply make sure autopilot is turned on and then push for nav mode and the aircraft will then change from flying the go around track to the nav track, which the nav track in this case would of course be the go around procedure that we looked at at the start of the video. Now also just to confirm what the go around track is. The go around track is whatever track the aircraft was flying when you set the thrust levers to toga. That is the go around track which the aircraft will follow until you tell it to do something else. So now let's have a look at the bulk landing procedure. The bulk landing procedure is a technique flown so you can safely get the aircraft away from the ground before initiating the full go around procedure. Now there is of course a specific reason for doing this and not just initiating a normal go around. If the aircraft is very close to the ground when the pilot decides that they want to go around, then should you do the normal go around procedure, which of course would be toga, go around flaps and rotate, there is a chance of a tail strike because the moment you set toga power, those engines underneath the wings roar to life and they actually pitch the aircraft up ever so slightly. Couple that with back pressure on the side stick, then a tail strike could be a potential threat, particularly if you're in something like the Airbus A321. So the bulk landing procedure is designed to get your aircraft safely away from the ground before initiating the full go around procedure. So let's take a look at how this is flown. The interesting thing with the bulk landing procedure is it is usually something that is performed by the captain as he would take control of the aircraft potentially from the first officer who may at the time have been the pilot flying and the captain then obviously wants to just guide that aircraft safely away. So there is a strict methodology to how this is done. Now of course there can also be various reasons why a bulk landing needs to be flown. It's not usually due to a destabilized approach because that is recognized early on and a go around would just be flown as normal. But perhaps something like a wind shear below 50 feet uh, of which suddenly you'd feel the aircraft sort of dropping out of the sky a little bit. Sadly, you don't get that sensation in a flight simulator. Obviously you do in the real world. Anyone who's been a passenger on an aircraft would know that you can feel every lump and bump of the aircraft's performance when you're sat in the seat in real life. Sadly, we don't get that here in the simulator. We're reliant a little bit more upon things like the radio altimeter call out. So if you hear that 50, 40, 30, 20 dropping really quickly, you know there's a good chance that something's gone wrong and perhaps bulk landing should be applied. If your aircraft actually touches down onto the runway during the bulk landing procedure, that is not an issue and quite often does happen. So the captain then, if he wanted to do a bulk landing, he recognized something is going wrong, would announce, Toga, I have control, and at the same time, set the thrust levers to Toga, and also press the side stick takeover push button, which is the autopilot disconnect button on the side stick, and hold it for three seconds. So you get a procedure that looks and sounds a little like this. 30. Toga, I have control. 
and the important thing now is not to rotate just selecting toga will force the aircraft to pitch up slightly and then once you are safely away and the speed has come back then you can rotate call for go around flaps and it is then just the same go around procedure that we saw earlier on in the video if you do have any questions or comments regarding what you've seen in this video then of course please do leave a comment down below love to hear from you guys and i do read all of the comments even if sadly i don't have time to respond to each and every one of them thank you so much for watching if you have enjoyed this video then please don't forget to leave a like and of course if you are new to the channel don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notifications bell so you don't miss any future videos and of course our live streamed content. Thank you so much. I'll see you all again in the next one. Bye bye for now.